Hello and welcome to this EasySnap iRig overview. In this three-part series, we'll be going over the basic functions and customizations of each individual rig. Of course, all versions can be purchased on Blender Market and Gumroad. Links are in the description. For this series, I'll be using the pro version in my demonstration, but if you have the basic or light versions, everything I'm showing you can be replicated in those files. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is switch over to the basic version. And there's not much to it. It's very simple. We just have the look target. We have the mesh itself where everything happens. That's where we're going to do our, all of our transforms, etc. You have the armature that we're not going to really be touching. So we're just going to turn that off. And then we have the eyelid, the eyelid controllers allow us to open and close. So our top eyelids are able to be moved up and down and rotated. If we select R, they'll rotate only on one axis to prevent any breaking of the rig itself. Same thing with our bottom eyelids. If we select that and we rotate. Just for aesthetic purposes, we only added the outline for the sclera and for the top eyelids. We found that with characters having um, an eye line on the bottom eyelid as well kind of created a boxy look that um, didn't lend itself well to having the eyelids when attached to a character. In addition to that, we have our iris controls. You can scale it down or scale it up. And if we select our mesh object and look in the shader editor, we have a universal color for our eyelids, but we can also detach that color for further control over each individual eyelid. So let's attach our Easy Snap eye rig to a character. And each of the files, the basic, the light, and the pro versions come with a Simon test dummy. So we'll just turn that on. And it's just a regular head with uh, some ears and a nose and a single head bone, just for the sake of being able to pair for the first time and help you get accustomed to how this works. So I'll select my mesh object. I'll go down to the modifiers tab and all of this is in our documentation that is in the file itself. And with the eyedropper tool, I'll select the head. You can see that it's already curved to the, to the object. And now I can go to the offset parameters and I can reduce the amounts. I'll just hold shift um, for a finer control. And I can get it just a little bit closer to the surface of my head object. Now you want to get it as close as possible, but be careful of, of having it go a little bit too far in because then it'll, uh, it'll be, it'll pass through the actual object. Um, I find that for the best results, I'll use my mouse, but then I'll go in and I'll choose, I'll start dialing things in um, just by typing in numbers and see how, how far that gets me. Maybe 55. It's decent enough. And so I'm just going to zoom out and turn off the overlays so you can see how that looks so far. Now you can see some of the reflection in the basic version. There's no control over that, but as we continue to develop the rig um, in the light version and in the pro version, there's controls over the reflectiveness or the roughness of the eyelids and the, and the eyes themselves. So that's how our character looks so far, but we're not done yet. We'll turn our overlays back on and we have to now go to the constraints. And we're just going to make sure that this is selected. Now I already had this selected from before, but for the sake of the tutorial, um, I'm just going to delete that and I'm going to choose the eye jockey tool once more, make sure it's right over the bone, the head bone. I'll select that and it's automatically you can choose my head rate. Cause I had that selected before, but then you'll just go in and you can just type what your, what the name of your bone is minus the head rate. And that's pretty much it to get you started. I can select my bone now and I can just grab it and move it around. And you can see that 
it's still connected to the look target. So the eyes are moving as I move the head bone around. And I can select my iris and scale it down or rather than doing it that way, I'll select both of them. I have my individual origin selected and I'll just scale that down and I'll select my look target and bring it right down to the nose. And you can see it's really good at getting really close to the face and having making it look realistic as if there was like a fly on his nose or something like that. Very, very easy to use. And that's basically it for um, controlling and customizing the basic version. In part two, I will go through the parameters for the light version. And in part three, I'll go over the pro version. Um, but we're before we're done, we're going to go into how to duplicate this rig. Um, in the basic version, it's very simple um, as there are no drivers connected to, to this. So I'm just going to select the, the entire collection. I'm going to right click, duplicate collection. And the problem with this right off the bat is we have no control over the eyes. Now, the reason for that is if we, let's just go ahead and turn off our original rig. You can see that it's not moving the eyes. If I select the mesh, go into the Easy Snap Eyes Basic Group node by tabbing, we can see that we have the original um, targets for the iris controls. So I'm going to tab back out of that. And it's very easy to have everything get reconnected. So we're just going to open everything up in our new version, our duplicated version. Make sure everything is open. Yep. I'm just clicking and dragging to open up the entire hierarchy. And I'm going to select, I'll box select, so I'll select B, box select all of those, then select B again, box select the rest of them. So I have every single object um, and parameter in my duplicated collection selected. Then I'm going to go over to edit batch rename. I'll type in basic because that's what I have as the name and we'll replace it with, let's say Kevin. And hit enter and hit enter again. And now you can see all of my basic names are changed to Kevin. Next, we're going to select the main mesh of our iRig. We're going to go over to the materials properties panel. And we're going to make this a single material because we want to make sure we don't overwrite the existing um, basic material that we have here. And we'll select the shield just to make sure that we'll always keep it. And then we're going to rename this to Kevin, our new character. And if we go over into the shader editor, we want to make sure that we expand this. Right now we have three users, um, one for the current rig that's selected, one for the basic rig that we've that we copied it from, and one is the single user. But we can just select this to make it its own single user. We want to make sure we do this so that when we edit anything inside, it doesn't edit from the original material. So we'll change this into Kevin as well. And now if we go over to the, when we select tab, and now when we select tab to enter, we want to make sure that we change these, all the green nodes to Kevin. 
So we'll just take that, select it. There is Kevin. So once we've selected all of our green nodes and changed the names, we'll just go back and check one more time. We can tab back out of the group node and we should have full control over our character again. Perfect. And so that's all we need to do to have full control over our Easy Snap iRig Basic. In the next video, we'll be going over the Easy Snap iRig Lite version.